Hey guys, so if you guys are familiar with my channel, you would know that every month I bring a meta analysis where I go through the dueling book replays of the top 25 players using YGO scope and outline the decks they play and their performance. This time, I am focusing on just the rogue decks that were played among the top 100 ranked players on dueling book in what I call a rogue analysis. So if you want to see this kind of rogue analysis each month as well, make sure to subscribe. Now to start off, defining a deck as rogue can be unclear at times. For this video, I decided to not include the following decks as they were considered tiers 1 and 2, which I based it off on some of the April tier list videos that were available. Some of the clear ones include tier 1 decks like Dragon Link, Dogmatica Invokes Your Doll, Prank Kids, and Dinos. The Eldritch picture more or less represent Eldritch Zodiac, and I suppose Eldritch Dragoon as well because I don't think that should be considered as rogue. Bird Up, I would say, should qualify more so as tier 2, and while I initially did want to include Virtual World as rogue, I did notice that other tier list videos had it in tier 2, so I just went with that. Now, I did decide to include Pure Zodiac as rogue though, which perhaps may be controversial, so this includes Zodiac lists that do not include Eldritch or Dogmatica engines. Again, the definition of rogue is not perfect and not everyone will agree with my categorization no matter how much I try to cater it, so keep that in mind. So with that being said, this was the breakdown of the matches that involved rogue decks among players that were in the top 100 in ranking on Dueling Book. This pie chart is based on 472 matches from 29 players that played a rogue deck and the data was based on April 25th. Now Pure Zodiac was the most played rogue deck among the top ranked players, but again, if you do not consider Pure Zoo as Rogue, then I guess Infernoble Noble Knight was the next most popular Rogue deck. We have some Mech Knights still rolling around, and Heroes are also seeing a decent amount of play too, even in the top 25 ranked players as based on my recent meta analysis. My friend Drew did recently top the extravaganza with Heroes as well, so certainly a respectable Rogue deck of choice. And then we have some Math Mech, which I have noticed in my previous meta analysis, where maybe it's the same player that's constantly in high rankings with this deck. We also have Subterra Dragoon followed by some Orcus builds with one incorporating an Eldritch engine. And then we have a bunch of decks that contributed to the same amount of matches including Adamancipator, ABC, Phantom Knight, Burning Abyss, Madolce, Mermail, Altergeist, and other decks that were less than 4%. This included decks like Earth Machine, Sky Striker, and Drytron, as well as several others. So among our top ranked players that played a rogue deck, they won about 69% of the matches, which is pretty impressive. They are of course very skilled players, which is why they can still do well with rogue decks. As for the rogue decks playstyle, we had an even amount of combo heavy aggro decks like Infernoble and Heroes, and control decks like Zodiac at 38% each. Now beatdown decks are typically your going second strategies that break boards and or deal a lot of damage, and I categorize math mech as beatdown as well just because that's how El Exordia del Duelista categorized that deck. But I did notice that this deck chooses to go first so let me know if that categorization is appropriate if you play this deck. Now when our top players playing rogue decks won the die roll, they chose to go first for game 1 73% of the time, meaning that 27% of the time they actually chose to go second for game 1. So a lot of going second decks for these rogue strategies. Conversely, if our top players lost the die roll, they went second for game 1 87% of the time, so got to go first for game 1 about 13% of the time even when they lost the die roll, which could be beneficial for many strategies like Infernoble that wants to go first. And as usual, I always try to cover the top 5 most played decks in these analyses and go over their win percentage based on several factors. Starting with Pure Zodiac, they won about 74% of their matches. They are a control deck that aims to poke you for small attacks and then overlay for AA Zeus to nuke your board, but can also make some big pushes for game as well. Now I typically provide match win percentages based on whether the player got to go first or second for game 1. The problem with doing that approach for this month's rogue analysis is that I was noticing that some builds for the same deck were going first, while another would be going second. So I'm going to provide win percentages based on whether the player won or lost the die roll, so that the win percentage for when the player won the die roll would mean they got to go in the turn that they preferred. So for pure Zodiac, when they won the die roll, they won about 71% of their matches, and funnily enough, when they lost the die roll, they won slightly higher at 77%. Now to try to dissect this a bit, I would say most pure Zulus were going second build so it probably did not matter whether they won or lost the die roll, although there were some pure Zoo matches included where they were going first builds. I think the main takeaway is that they have a pretty balanced win percentage whether they win or lose the die roll. 
Now looking at their win percentage based on different playstyle of decks they faced, they were pretty similar for against aggro and beatdown strategies at 67 to 68% while doing better against other control strategies at 82%. Next, we have Infernoble Knights, far from where they once were prior to the ban list hits to Smoke Grenade and Link Cross, but they seem to be still popular online as they were the most played rogue deck in my last rogue analysis in February. They still have a little bit of hand ripping going on with Aqua Dolphin, and the Charles Pop is still pretty strong even though they don't get to pop the Smoke Grenade anymore. They did win 68% of their matches, which was much better than the February rogue analysis. Now if they won the die roll, where they would be going first for game 1, they won 73% of their matches and understandably did poor at 59% if they lost the die roll. As for their performance against different playstyles, seemed to be pretty balanced against aggro, control and beatdown strategies at around 62-71%. to And then we have Mech Knights which did top in LCS not too long ago and did make my March meta analysis as well. Although seems to have cooled off a bit in terms of performance, winning around 63% of the matches. Of course, this is always affected by the small sample size for these videos. Now, Mech Knights are traditionally a going second kind of deck that will play your standard break my board kind of cards, as well as benefiting from multiple cards in the same column, and also usually played alongside an invoked engine. Now, one thing I did notice is that there was a going first Mech Knight build included for this video, which seemed to play a lot of traps. So that's why I wanted to break down the win percentage based on die roll instead. And so when they won the die roll and got to choose to go second or first depending on the build, they won 83% of the matches. When they lost the die roll though, that win percentage did really drop and I suspect that this is being dragged down mostly probably by the going first mech knight build because the traditional going second mech knights should not be affected too much by the die roll since they want to go second and most decks want to go first. As for their win percentage based on different playstyles, seem to struggle against aggro decks this time around as well as beatdown strategies. This is based on really small sample sizes though. Next up we have Heroes, a fan favorite archetype that is honestly equipped with a lot of strong boss monsters in the deck like Destiny Hero Plasma that's a one sided skill drain and Mass Hero Dark Law that's a one sided macro cosmos. Malicious Bane is a tough monster to out as well and heroes can deal a lot of damage in a hurry. They won an overall 68% of the matches which is much higher than the 46%-ish you see on YG Scope because that's based on both good and bad players playing this deck while the 68% you see here is based on some of the top ranked players that are piloting heroes. Now most hero matches included in this video were going first builds but there were some matches included that involved a going second build as well. So if we look at it based on die roll, if they won the die roll and got to choose to go first or second depending on their preference, they won an impressive 79% of the time. Sadly, that win percentage did drop quite a bit to 57% if they lost the die roll. As for their win percentage against different playstyles, they seem to do decently well against control and beatdown strategies at 75 and 67% respectively, but at just 60% for other aggro strategies. And finally, we have Mathmex, and I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I have absolutely no idea what this deck does but I assume it does a lot of damage. The top ranked players piloting this deck won 68% of the time. Based on die roll it seemed to be pretty balanced, they were all going first builds and if they won the die roll they won 72% of their matches while winning 64% of the matches if they lost the die roll. Small sample size of course as I always say. Lastly they seem to have done well against control and beatdown strategies at 78-86% to but struggled mightily against aggro strategies this time around at 46%. Let me know if this makes sense if you play Mathmex. Personally, I have no idea whether these graphs based on playstyles make sense at all, but hopefully they show some realistic trends. Alright guys, so that was it for this month's Rogue Analysis. Hope you found that interesting and hope this video gets enough traffic for me to want to do this again on a recurring basis. My next video is the May 2021 meta-analysis of the top 25 ranked players, so stay tuned. Take care guys.